if it's a math equation, what does the final calculation look like in terms of ending up in heaven? What does it mean to live a good life in the end? Is it um, the average amount of sin you do is, is low? Can you, are you allowed to make mistakes? Yeah, uh, you know, the, the, the metric is love, right? And love is not a feeling, it's an act of the will. To will the good of the other. That's Aquinas again. To will the good of the other as other. You see, that's the anti-black hole principle. When I, I, I don't- Will the good of the other- As the other. other. See, because if, if I'm willing your good because it's good for me, so uh, I guess, you know, it's good for you that I'm on this program, I guess. So I'm, I'm willing your good, but that's because it's going to redound to my benefit. Right. That's just an indirect egotism. That's why I see love is really rare and strange, that I really want what's good for you as yes. other. Yes. So not connected to the black hole tendency of my own prideful ego. When I've broken that, I've forgotten self and I've moved into the space of your own good. That's what love is. Now, God wants us to be, you know, by this, you, they will know that you're my disciples, that you love one another, Jesus says. So that's it. Now, I, I mean, life is ups and downs and back and forth, and we're better or worse at that. Uh, the point of the church is to graft us onto Christ, that we might become more and more conformed to love. But, you know, the final calculus, I'll leave that to God. I mean, I, but, but use love as the metric. At the end of the day, when you examine your conscience, did I will the good of the other today? How how effective was I at that? And and be this like Ignatius of Loyola, be brutally honest. Or was I just willing someone's good because it was good for me? Uh what where where were those moments where I was like the dog on the beach? See, see, and, and then see, play it the way, not so much God the lawgiver surveying, and you did, you know, three of those and four. It's God wants us to be fully alive. Saint Irenaeus is one of my great heroes, ancient, you know, patristic figure. And his famous line is Gloria Dei Homo Vivens, right? The glory of God is a human being fully alive. See, and, and that gets us over this sort of obsession with the legalism and did I do enough? And is that that's a big enough sin? And God wants us fully alive. The key to that is willing the good of the other. He he died <laughs> that we might come to a richer uh, appropriation of that. So to be fully alive is to be in love with the world or to love the world deeply. And what love means is the other is get out uh, of yourself. Right. It's, it's, it's the humility. Yeah. Getting out of yourself. Let but go. Th that somehow is not, uh, that's not even selfless because, uh, the word selfless requires there to be a self. It's, it's almost like just letting go. Yeah, I might talk about like a gift of self that you you're self aware, but you you give a gift of yourself. Yourself becomes not a magnet drawing things into itself, but it becomes a radiant source of life for others. I think Mother Teresa would have had a keen sense of herself, it seems to me, but it was um, to light other people uh, up so that they might be uh, uh, radiant. You know, that's the game. So I you you probably articulate it that way too. Yeah. I love love. It's such an interesting thing. But we have to be hard nosed about it. Like you know, your friend Dostoevsky, that love is a harsh and dreadful thing. Yeah. Right. It's not a feeling. And our our culture is so sentimentalized love that it's having warm feelings or doing what people want. And that's not it at all. Love is always correlated to the order of the good. Because if I'm willing the good of the other, I have to know what that good is. Right. Yeah. So a parent that says, Oh, I'll give the kid whatever she wants. Well, that's not love. That's that's indulgence or that's sentimentality. But I have to know what the goods really are if I'm going to will them for you, right? Yeah, I in some sense you're you're absolutely right. <clears throat> a component of love is the struggle to know the other. Right, it's the struggle to understand. I mean, that's um, that's what I mean by empathy. Is to yeah, it's not it's yeah, it's not Valentine's Day romantic gifts. It's uh, it's a struggle. It's like uh, trying to understand, trying to perturb your own mind, and that of another human being to try to figure out who they are, what they want, what makes them uh, happy, what are they right. afraid of, what are they hoping for? And it's like a dance, a right. dance of conversation, a dance of yes. uh, just shared experiences and all that kind of stuff. And all of that requires for you to be, I guess, um, yeah, empathize. Imagine yourself 
in their place and then love that person when you're living inside that person. <laughs> yeah. Several minutes ago about the pillars of Christianity. So we yes. talked about God, talked about incarnation, but you're getting now to a third key one, namely the Trinity, because it, we're monotheists, right? But we don't think God is monolithically one. We think God is a play of persons. And the Father from, from all eternity, uh, by a great mental act, forms his interior word, as Aquinas puts it. And that's the logos, right? That's the verbum. That's the, the word by which the Father knows himself. And we call it the Son. So the imago, it's the image of the Father. But then, see, the great thing is that imago is not like just a dead image on a, on a mirror or a dead image at a pond or something. It's, it's a full reflection of the Father's being. He's one in being with the Father. Therefore, the Son has everything the Father has except being the Father. But that means that the two of them look at each other and they're just crazy in love with each other because the, the Father is the fullness of being. The Son is the fullness of being. And they're so crazy in love with each other that they, this is um, uh, Fulton, she put it this way, that there's this, <sighs> they just, they love each other with this sigh. And we call that the Spiritus Sanctus. That's the holy breath, right? The holy <sighs> sigh of love between the Father and the Son. And, and that's it's one being, <laughs> one essence we say of God, but in these three persons, but all your language about like dance and play and community. The Greek fathers talked about perichoresis, which means God, the three persons kind of sit in a choir together. Mm -hmm. So they, they, um, they sing together, you know? And, and that's why, see, Christianity is unique in this claim, that God is love. So every religion will say God loves, you know, in some way. Love is an attribute of God. God is, or love is a thing that God does sometimes. But Christianity is unique in all the religions in saying that God is love. 